What's up guys, Steven here. Welcome to my review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S2. So I would say, let's get directly started. So guys, here it is, the Tab S2. And first of all, I have to say, the design is simply stunning. It runs Android 5 straight out of the box. The main body is completely made out of metal and the best thing is the thickness. The camera doesn't stick out like on the 8 inch model and it's only 5.6 millimeters thick. This is outstanding, it looks almost even better than an iPad. And yeah, um, the display size, it's 9.7 inches, has now a different form factor, so different um, yeah, um, screen ratio, it's 4 to 3, like 1536 times 2048 pixels equals a pixel density of 264 pixels per inch. Technology used, Super AMOLED, as we know from Samsung devices, I just love it, looks really beautiful. Then let's also talk about the battery, you know it's only 5.6 millimeters thick, so the battery capacity is also lower than for instance the iPad, so we have 5870 milliamp hours, and the battery life is quite good, I will tell you a little bit later about this. So regarding the hardware, the system on chip is the Exynos 7 Octa 5433. It's an octa processor running with a maximum clock of 1.9 GHz and makes this device absolutely snappy. 3 gigs of RAM, even 1 GB more than the iPad Air 2, 64 GB built-in storage on the, on the premium model, but this one here is actually the 32 GB model, which also supports micro SD card storage expansion up to 128 GB, so that's a real benefit on this Android tablet, just throw in a micro SD card if you need space, and this really helps a lot. So regarding connectivity, we have Wi-Fi on board, and that's it, also Bluetooth 4.1, but um, no GPS, no 3G on this model here, so yeah, that's everything. It comes with a micro USB port, so it also supports OTG. And the cameras are 8 and 2.1 megapixel, but the 8 megapixel camera doesn't sound too much on the rear side, but it supports Quad HD recording, so 2560 times 1440 pixels, and I have to say, looks really beautiful. Okay guys, now before we have a closer look at the tablet, let me quickly show you what you can find inside of the box. So this is the box I've received here with serial number as always. Um, then let's open it up and there we go. So we just have the basic accessories, nothing too super fancy. We have a quick starter guide as you can see. So it's still sealed, it doesn't tell you too much about the tablet, so yeah, just a quick starter guide. Um, we have here the charging accessories, so here you can see the charger, and it's a quick charger, yes. Um, the output, if you have a look at that, it's 5 volts and 2 amps, that equals 10 watts. Now the charging time on the Tab S2 was, well, we actually measured 4.5 hours, so this was actually not too good. I've not used that charger here, but I've used some comfortable quick chargers, so you can see this one here is still sealed. But I have to say, yeah, um, charging performance wasn't really the best I've seen on a tablet. Then here you can see for instance the micro USB charging cable, here in white, also still sealed, here QR code, and yeah, that's basically it. So this is what you can find inside of the box all along with the tablet, and now let's close it and let's have a closer look at the tab. So ladies and gentlemen, here it is, the Tab S2 9.7 inch version, and if you just check this out, this thing is absolutely huge. So, um, first feeling in my hands was like, oh my god, feels like my Galaxy S6, which I had, but way, way bigger, because if you just check this out here at the bottom, then um, we still have here, for instance, the mechanical home button, which also acts um, as a fingerprint scanner, so this is built in, and if you want to unlock, so if the screen is black, then you just press once at the home button and it will unlock with the fingerprint scanner within not even a second. So this one here is really accurate, really fast, also works if your fingers are a little bit sweaty. So very good fingerprint scanner performance. Also capacitive touch buttons here on the front panel and they have such a beautiful backlight. This is something I really love about um, Samsung. Backlight on the capacitive touch buttons, always beautiful. All right, so the display, as you can see, we have now a different screen factor and resolution viewing angles, yeah, it's an S AMOLED display, and I'm totally in love with S AMOLED. So I have now an iPhone, and I still think my S6 Edge had such a beautiful display, but yeah, um, that's S AMOLED, guys. So front side, Samsung logo at the top, just looks like a phone, just with a different yeah, form factor, it's really huge. At the top, we have the two megapixel front-facing camera, which is quite okay, and we also have the light sensor, but so far as I can see, there's no proximity sensor, no front-facing LED flash, or any other of those things. The bezels, yeah, um, it's around a centimeter on each side here. On um, bottom side, it's like two centimeters, so the top and the, and the bottom bar. So it's quite okay, but the most beautiful thing is... Oh, sorry guys, that was Google. Um, you can see here right now the thickness, and this is absolutely amazing. So it's below six millimeters, so 5.6 satisfaction sheet, and 
it's thin like paper. On the left side of the frame, we just have here the metal frame, you can see it's double-sided faced, which gives it even um, a more slimmer look. But yeah, um, absolutely nice. Feels also pretty good in my hands. On the other side of the um, yeah of the frame here, we have a couple of things. Actually, all the things are placed here. And we have here um, a SIM card slot, so you can actually just um, use the tool which was included and open it up, and you can put in micro SD cards up to 128 gigabytes. There's also a little hole on this side of the frame, which is the microphone, so it comes with a built-in microphone on this side. The 8-inch version has it at the top, and here we have the buttons. So volume button up and down, and feels very good not sliding up and down. And also here, the power button feels very good, because it's also made out of metal, just like the frame, has a face, and doesn't slide up and down. Absolutely cool. So if we just have a look here at the back side, so maybe let's do it this way, then you can see we have here the Samsung logo. Here's a sticker with the, what's that serial number and the model number and at the top the camera sticks only a little bit out of the device. The 8 inch version comes way more out of the device. So if you want to really have the, the smallest, the thinnest tablet then you should go with the 9.7 inch version but yeah it's kind of big in the size so really huge. Then here we have those magnet things or whatever they are so basically for the accessories like flip covers which you can buy. Um, at the bottom C certification logo and the back has some really cool, it's like rubberized, it feels a little bit like yeah some very small smooth and um, plastic, a little bit like rubber, Samsung logo, you can definitely feel it if you um, move your finger over it, and yeah, really nice looking backside, sexy. At the top of this device here we have, yeah, nothing, so just a frame, once again you can see how amazingly thin that is, and at the bottom here we have also a couple of interesting things, a 3.5mm headphone jack, so as always to connect a headset, which um, I think there is one included, but um, here we have a micro USB port, so this one here is to charge here at the bottom of the frame and we have dual speakers so yes guys real dual speakers right one left one and they sound okay um, you have to um, notice that the tablet is absolutely thin and speakers always need room so speakers are not too good but I have to say they sound pretty good for the size all right so that's the tablet here from all sides honestly I have to say I absolutely love the design um, pretty cool this place really scratch resistant and yeah I dropped it once nothing happened happened so far and seems to be very good build quality. But let's jump directly into Android and let's check out what we can do with that beauty. So guys, there we go. We're here directly in Android 502 on the Galaxy Tab S2 and I have to say um, it's totally snappy, the Exynos Octa-Core processor with 3 gigs of RAM performs really, really good. Just check this out guys. Absolutely no lag in the animation and yeah, it's running that touch with thing. Um, looks kind of strange but um, yeah, you have to love it or you have to hate it. Then let's... Um, Go here to, for instance, yeah, the task manager. Here we have the close all thing, as always. So absolutely really smooth. No background applications right now, but I can tell you also under heavy load, it performs really good. So first of all, here in the settings, let's go here to about device. Here we can see Android version 502. So this is right now the latest version. So I'm connected to Wi-Fi. There are OTA updates. I'm not really sure. I don't have the tablet so long, but I haven't played around with custom ROMs or anything um, which is better right now. So here you can see latest update has already been installed. Okay, this is here what we can find on the about device, model number and all that. Also, yeah, it comes with Nox, so probably if you root it, which I haven't done yet, um, it will trigger Nox and yeah, this kind of sucks, but well, battery capacity here once again and what it, it is rated at. First of all, I want to say Wi-Fi is very good on the tablet. You can see I'm connected here to my office network on 2.4 gigahertz. We can also have a quick look at the Wi-Fi analyzer, which I've installed. And I have to say, um, my iPhone, which you can see right over here, so I can show you here the direct comparison. I mean, here it's okay, but if I go one meter to the right, I always lose my signal. I'm not really sure if this iPhone is broken or has any issues. So it also shows it two bars, like almost like the tablet, but I have to say, the iPhone always loses connection and it makes me totally sick. But here Wi-Fi on the Tab S2 performs pretty, pretty good. Okay, then let's go back here to the settings. We can do it here. So that was Wi-Fi. Bluetooth, I've just, um, yeah, paired it once with my car and then I've deleted it, but nothing special. Bluetooth 
working actually um, always. Um, we have a sound notifications, we have display settings, also nothing special in here, but it has smart stay, so basically um, works with the front facing camera, so if you look at the display, we'll um, keep it on. We have motions and gestures, so to mute alarms, place your hand on the screen while the screen is on and such things, so palm swipe to capture, which I'm not really using, I, I mean it's um, more effort to swipe over there than to use the combination, but um, you can also do that if you want to. We have here application um, application manager so as always um, yeah there are some things included which I don't like so much but it comes down to personal preference you can also yeah um, get rid of those system applications for sure it has different user accounts um, as most of the devices here you can see different wallpapers home screen lock screen so this is by default with the semi wallpapers um, we have your lock screen and security, and this is actually where we should go to because this is the fingerprint scanner. Um, you can see here screen lock type is fingerprint, so place your fingertip on the home to verify your identity. No match, that's not good. Okay, um, here you can see no security or fingerprints. As always, it will give you the possibility to hide content or show content depending if you're on a lock screen or not. So yeah, that's it. Um, you can check out your fingerprints. So I will put now my finger here on the scanner and you can go here to add fingerprint. Now if you want to improve your fingerprint performance, then you can just um, register your finger multiple times. Like I'm doing it here a second time for my thumb, but I have to say, even with one fingerprint, this is absolutely accurate. Just like on the iPhone, it's also possible to use your fingerprint if you do purchases in the Samsung account, so in the Samsung store. Okay, um, then let me quickly show you here the performance once again. So let's lock the display, and there we go. And now, if you want to go back in, just press it once, unlock, and this is really blazing fast. So, fingerprint performance, thumbs up from me. Okay, now let's go back to the settings. That was lock screen and security. Um, we have privacy things, ac accessibility, different accounts, backup and reset. So nothing special in here. For sure, it's a, it's a Samsung phone, so that means it's multi-language uh, tablet. Sorry. Um, we have the battery stats. And now let's talk a little bit about the battery because just like the charging speed, I was not so super happy. So we did a battery life test with continuous web surfing and it was like 7 hours 20 and for instance um, we researched the values on the iPhone, or oh, sorry iPad, and on the iPad it's almost 10 hours. So the battery life was not so good as in the daily use, so um, coming through the day was possible but I felt like there could be some more choose in the device at the end of the day. Anyway, um, you can see here 81% approximately 8 hours left, well I can tell you for instance um, movie playback test from 100% like 90 minutes dropped down to to like 80% of the battery size. Okay, um, what you can see here is that the screen yeah, takes the most of the power because this is a very huge screen. But for sure you have power saving mode and you have ultra power saving mode, which you also have on Samsung smartphones. Let's check out the storage, so 32 gigabytes. Available right now, I've installed also several apps, so I have 20 gigabytes. I think straight off the box it was like five gigabytes more, something like that, which was pretty okay. The SD card here, 64 gigabytes, is detected and works pretty fine. We have here accessories, we have date and time, user manual, the usual stuff, and last but not least about the device where we were before. So let's come to the usability. As always, Android status bar, it features a lot of stuff. We have for sure Wi-Fi, um, location only on 8 GPS base. The display, um, here yeah, you can adjust the brightness, and I have to say, really bright, also in outdoor conditions. No problem to read the display, and SMLED, yeah, just looks beautiful with contrast and colors. We have here mute screen rotation, you can lock that, as always, Bluetooth, power saving mode which you can trigger here too and here you can also for instance edit the Android status bar so what things you want to show up here um, yeah do not disturb mode reading mode so this um, warms up the display a little bit so this is actually easier to not easier to read but better for your eyes at least they say that um, here we have the ultra power saving mode which deactivates a lot of features smart stay so it keeps on the display as long as you stare at the display private mode, last but not least screen mirroring, um, mirroring sorry. Um, you can use it basically to um, stream your um, display of the tablet to any device like your Samsung Smart TV and that works pretty good but yeah I'm not really using that feature. Okay so what do I use the tablet actually for? Now it's pretty cool in the morning for instance to yeah watch the news and you can do multi windows just like this from the top corner, swipe here a little bit to the inner display and as you can see you now have here a window in the screen and if you want to do that with another application let's say you want to watch the YouTube comments or whatever um, your favorite YouTube channel you can do it here again and suddenly you now have um, two of those yeah 
screens on your big display. So um, what you can also do is, for instance, if you have one of those displays, you can swipe it here to the left, and then it will go full screen, and you can also split the screen exactly in the middle. Now to use that multi-window thing, so to have like two things on a display, you just have to touch and hold here the recent apps button. This will show you here a list of applications, then you can tap one application to be on your left side, so for instance here Chrome. So um, you can now browse the internet here on the left side, and um, on the right side, let's say I want to watch some of my YouTube movies to check out comments, and I can do that. So this is what I do for instance in the morning, grab a coffee, just um, have the tablet here on my desk, and then um, yeah, I just browse something check all my emails, have some YouTube movie in the background, checking out the news, and this is pretty cool. So I'm really glad that I actually can use a tablet here like this, and that's so easy. Now, also, um, something, for instance, um, that's pretty cool. So if you um, just get a small screen of one application and you press here the home button, then you will see there's a little, like, a drop on your display, which you can drag and drop around. And um, this one here is basically your application. You have now closed, but you can reopen it and get it here as the window. You can do that with as many applications as you want to. So just open it up, make it smaller, press the home button, and there we go. So we now have two of those drops here on balls on the screen. So that's pretty cool, um, very easy to use and makes life really easier. So, back in the home screen, let me quickly show you the applications which were pre-installed and what I've actually installed. So, you can see it comes here with all the basic things and the first important thing is the camera application, so let's jump directly into it. And yeah, um, here we have the rear camera, which is here on the top, so this is why it also um, yeah, looks here behind everything. Um, we can quickly have a look here at the different modes. So, it has auto mode, it has pro mode, that means you can adjust a lot of things. Um, here, for instance, the white balance, ISO rating, the exposure and back in mode we have virtual shot we have HDR shots and more dual cameras a picture in picture and download so what you can also find on Samsung smartphones let's quickly switch it to the front facing camera and there we go so Hello guys, I have to move a little bit out because it's not so super wide angle front facing cameras placed here. I'm just sitting like half a meter away from it. And yeah, um regarding the front facing camera it looks quite okay. So let's take a selfie. Oh camera in front of the way, but you will find sample pictures on our blog, so make sure you check it out. We have different effects, we have a face beauty mode, really important for all the girls out there. <laughs> we have your settings, um, you can see your picture size, 2.1 megapixels, it's the maximum, in 16 to 9 equals full HD resolution, which is also the maximum video quality. So you will see video samples just in a second. We have gesture control, um, yeah, those other things, so storage and location nothing special. Then um, we have video mode here so you can switch all that. Um, we can switch it to the rear camera and let's go here to the settings too. And here you can see the maximum picture size is only 8 megapixels. Doesn't sound too much and honestly I have to say, yeah, it isn't also really much, but pictures are looking good. By the way, you have the 8 megapixels only 4 to 3. So if you want to have them in 16 to 9, it drops down to 6 megapixels. So this could be better, but I have to say the video size, absolutely cool. Quad HD, that means 2560 times 1440 pixels. Um, I think I said 4K in the video, but anyway, um, it's Quad HD and um, looks very very good on the tablet. So yeah, also on the iPad, which I had, I wasn't really happy with the camera, but I have to say this is a camera you could actually also use. Okay, you will now see um, some sample videos from the camera. By the way, sample pictures on the blog, so make sure you check them out. All right, guys, so we're now here outside of the office, and I just quickly want to show you here the front-facing camera quality. Here outside, there's plenty of light, and I have to say in preview, it looks pretty good. The lighting adjustment works, as you can see. So here, from bright to dark areas, but let's go inside and let's just quickly check out how it performs in dark areas, so when there is actually just low lighting, and there we go. And we can now quickly go here um, to the cellar, there's actually almost no light, and you see it turns really crispy. So very high ISO rating, here it's almost completely dark, you can't see anything anymore. Very crispy, it does a good job in low lighting, not the best, but still quite okay for the price. Alright guys, so we're now here outside of the office and here's a quick 4K recording test on the Galaxy Tab S2. And yeah, just check this out, colors are looking beautiful here, everything on automatic settings. Also here, as you can see, if I shake it, the image stabilization, that's really, really smooth. There is no lagging, um, yeah, constant frame rate. Looks quite good. But yeah, um, let's go here a little bit around. Now, on the big screen, you can definitely see everything which is sharp or not sharp, and I have to say, 
details in the background in preview looks a little bit blurry if you move the device but if you if you try to hold it still then looks absolutely sharp and pretty nice colors very fast and good lighting adjustment and yeah also the image stabilization look at this this is really quite smooth for 4k recording I have to say a pretty good recording quality here on the tab s2 So back on the tablet, let's check out all the other applications. We have here the Smart Manager and that's pretty cool, shows us all important stats, shows us the battery level, shows us the RAM used and here you can see the RAM usage is really high. This is TouchWiz, um, same like on my Galaxy for instance, you can see 76% of 3GB are used by the system with just a few background things. And we just have 700 megabytes free. If we go here to clean, it will now just clean up all the memory and as you can see 50% of the RAM used but still. 1.5 gigs. So it fills up pretty fast with not too much things, but if you use multi-win on that, you can really come to the MAM cap. But the device um, performs always very smooth, just like an iPad. You can see the storage actually not using too much because of the micro SD and device security. Well, not using that at all because just my private fun tablet. Um, we have here side sync and there we go. So for instance, um, no, we'll do the update later. That's a pretty cool thing. So side sync will connect the device to another device and mirror your device on it. So that's pretty cool. That's like screen mirroring and you can do um, things you can also do on the other device like um, using apps to make phone calls as you can see. So that was pre-installed um, all along with all those other things. Okay that's an um, yeah own window um, let's go back here so Galaxy apps as always so you can go to the Samsung store Chrome blah blah blah, blah. Um, the Play Store latest version as always nothing special Microsoft apps came pre-installed and under some crap from actually um, my Google account um, what I really miss is like a flashlight on this tablet it has absolutely no rear camera flash no front facing flash so that kind of sucks and yeah here we already have the benchmark things so what I'll do now I will run all the benchmarks then let's talk about performance let's also talk about yeah um, the movie quality and sound quality and after all that we will hear my final conclusion about it now movie playback on the tab s2 is absolutely smooth no problem at all speakers um they are not too loud also sound a little bit flat but the device is very thin but at least real dual speakers so sound is coming out of the left speaker grid and the right speaker grid that sounds pretty cool but um it would be cooler left and right so yeah if you use it in portrait modes that dual thing is not so really cool but um yeah there is no total oversteering at maximum volume let me quickly um show you that this is at maximum volume it's okay to watch movies and it's completely um, sufficient, but I have to say at maximum volume also they sound kind of flat and very little over steering, but almost nothing um, in comparison to Chinese tablets. So that's pretty okay for me. Yo, 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 so here are the benchmark results, 1,300 single core, 4,300 on the multi-core. So the multi-core performance of this chipset, simply amazing. Okay, then let's close it. Let's have a closer look here at um, CPU-C, for instance. There you will see um, this Exynos chipset um, combines basically 1.3 GHz quad-core and 1.9 GHz octa-core, uh, sorry, also quad-core, and 700 to 1.9 GHz, but you can see um, also some cores are stuck here, 400 megahertz. It's really quite efficient, CPU load is not very low but the RAM usage is very high and um, you can see the internal storage screen resolution blah blah nothing too special but here we have for instance system doesn't come with root access and if you root it you will probably trigger knock so this is kind of bad Android 502 regarding the battery here also nothing special the temperature is pretty good I had even though it's a very thin tablet no issues with overheating you can also see right now after the benchmarks of the gaming keeps quite cool Regarding the sensors, it has all the basic sensors, but it has no proximity sensor, as I've told you. Then let's close this. Let's also have a look here at the Antutu benchmark. So this tells us also that um, this device is pretty powerful because 63,000. Now, um, no, we don't want to 
download anything so let's go here to the ranking and if you check this out here then you can see it's um, quite close to the LG G4 and the, uh, the Google Nexus 6 p is a little bit higher but the Elite TV 1S for instance uh, Lenovo K3 Note well it's an MTK octa core it's way lower um, we can also have a very quick look at the sensor box and there you will see that it just has the basic sensors, but also it has a gyroscope which works and a magnetic sensor for all the accessories. And yeah, there is no proximity sensor, as you can see, this is the only thing which is lost here. Okay, um, then let's have a closer look here at the multi-touch tester, because this is a 10-point capacitive touchscreen, and really, you can use both of your hands on the screen at the same time, and it will recognize everything. Also, blazing fast, totally snappy, and that's regarding the performance. I can say, pretty good performance. Okay, then now, let's jump into a game, and let's check out the gaming performance. Now also the gaming performance is very good, so for instance Real Racing 3, so also with most of the details, um, looks just simply stunning and performs totally smooth on this really big screen with a very high resolution. So not only Real Racing 3, also all other games like Modern Combat 5, um, yeah, Asphalt 8 or any game you want to, so runs really fine on this tablet. So regarding gaming performance I can say pretty good but battery drops quite fast and yeah um, screen also looks beautiful so gaming on an S AMOLED you just will enjoy the colors that looks good but also other graphic intense games like Modern Combat or anything else runs pretty good now it's not so much fun to play on this tablet because I mean oh sorry that's my own one because it's really huge so with a gamepad this is way more fun but all those games run absolutely smooth and this is something I love on this tablet so, um, yeah, that's gaming on the Galaxy Tab S2, so that's actually not really a game you can't play on this thing. And also on the S AMOLED display, as I've told you before, colors, resolution, that looks really beautiful. So this was my review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S2, and so far I have to say it's a great tablet. I would definitely get this one here instead of the iPad. Now, first of all, um, I have to say I really love the design. This is absolutely thin. I love the S-AMOLED display, which is very colorful and looks good, but for sure there are also some downsides. Now, for instance, the battery life is not as good, so the iPad definitely wins there. Then also, there is no LED flash on the camera. I wish it would have one. That would be really great. And yeah, um, the charging speed is also not the best, so probably you should go around with your charger, but I, had to say, I have to say that I could come through the day with the tablet, so it's not that the battery life is bad, but it could be better, but also also it's a very slim tablet so also the battery inside is not too big. Okay guys, then um, regarding the performance, absolutely nice. This device is really snappy, it's super fast and the gaming performance is just great. Even though it runs touch with, which includes a little bit of bloat, it's still a very good performer and the average user won't notice a single lag and also the gaming performance as you've seen is quite good. So thumbs up for the tablet, price $4.99, links down below in the description. Thanks for watching this review, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any Tech Thursday and see you soon in the next one. Bye bye.